quest they did really well as well so all the marks was really high so let's start um, you can answer through the chat box or you can shout with the answer so whatever you like okay so let's start the first question the infant shown in this image is at risk of which of the following complication cleft palate diaphragmatic hernia hypospyridosis imperforated anus or coarctation of an aorta coarctation of the aorta well done, yes, that's E, that's coarctation of an aorta. So do you know which syndrome that is associated with the segmental infantile hemangioma? Facial. Yes, it is facial syndrome, yes, and it consists of posterior pulsa malformation, hemangioma, arterial anomalies, cardiac defect, coarctation of an aorta, eyes anomaly, sternal defect, and sub raphe. Okay, that's a quest, kind of a quick review in face center, which is very important before you do any kind of um, uh, intervention for this patient is to do MRI for the head and neck and refer to patient to pediatric ophthalmology. Okay, that is very important. Okay, question two. One of the following is not associated with elastosis perforantia pangenosis. Morphan syndrome, pseudoxanthoma elasticum, Berkman-Thompson syndrome, xeroderma pigmentosum, osteogenesis imperfecti. Let's get more answer. Dr. Jawahar, you are very active. Love your enthusiasm during the quiz. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, let's see. Yes, and that's D. Absolutely, everyone is right. And that's zero derma pigmentosum. And let me just give you a quick mnemonic to remember all the association with the elastosis perforans serpanginosis, whether it is a disease or medication. Go with MAD pores, MAD pores, which stand for MAD pores. M for Marfan, A for acroduria, D for Down syndrome, P for penicillamine. O for osteogenesis imperfect I, R for Rickmund Thamson, Ehler Donless, and Scleroderm. So that's a kind of a quick, you know, shortcut to remember what is the association with um, ESP, APS. Okay, question three. This is a 34 years old woman reported a long history of renal phenomena. The only medication she takes is allopurinol as needed for an exercise-induced asthma. On exam, you notice a splinter hemorrhage on the fingernail, as well as the picture finding. Which of the following antibody the least likely to be positive in this woman? Least likely. And we get answer B, yes, that is correct. It's antihistone. And why it is antihistone? Because it's typically present in the setting of a drug-induced, remember, antihistone with a drug-induced systemic lupus. Unlikely to be for this patient because she is only taking allopurinol, which is unlikely for um, uh, drug-induced lupus. And could anybody remember what's the most important drugs that cause um, uh, Lupus. Systemic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Hydralazine, yes, Dr. Mohammed, absolutely right. Any other drug? Isonazide, Dr. Aziz, yes, well done. Minocycline, yes, absolutely, yes. You said the most the three important drug and uh, uh, brocanamide as well. Yes, yes, Dr. Aziz, well done. So do remember uh, the drug association. So you know that this patient, his sign and symptom go with antiphospholipid syndrome. And you know that antiphospholipid syndrome is associated with a positive antiphospholipid 
antibodies, which mainly cause with the thrombosis kind of effect, okay? So they will have a small or medium vessel or large vessel thrombosis, and the feature will be more of thrombocytopenia, neuropathy, nephropathy, cardiac valve disease, and cognitive dysfunction, and the skin ulcer as well. Um, okay, uh, and as you know, so just keep on mind that antiphospholipid syndrome can be in a patient with systemic LE, but can present in patient who doesn't have any autoimmune disease as well. And this is a quite important. So keep your mind open for all of these symptoms and sign, okay? Okay, and as you know, that a treatment based on anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy. Okay, question four. At which earliest gestational age epidermal development most likely to be complete? Hmm. People in between 22 and 20. Any more answer? We get more toward the 20 and 22 is fighting. I see the correct answer is a 22 almost there all of you and i think most of you get it actually wrong <laughs> um yes it's a 22 remember that 12 weeks colorate with the formation of the dermoepidermal junction 15 colorate with the melanin production 20 with the hair follicle keratinization that is very important so usually they ask about the 20 and the 22 weeks so 20 with the hair follicle and the uh, 22, as we said. Okay. Uh, question five. Granulation tissue is initially composed of which of the following? Just focus. Initially composed of which of the following? Which collagen? Collagen one, two, three, four, or six. I guess all agree for collagen three and absolutely right. It's collagen three. Yes. Collagen one. Usually, it's located in the dermis, bone, ligament, and tendon. Collagen 2 in the cartilage and vitreous humor. Collagen 3 in the fetal skin and the blood vessel. And the granulation tissue in the first stage. And remember, within the last stage of a granulation tissue, it's usually converted to collagen 1. Okay? Um, and then we have collagen 4, which is located in the basement membrane. Okay. So, well done all. Collagen 6 in the aorta and the placenta. Okay, question 6. Which component of the skin is mutated in ichthyosis vulgaris? I saw, okay, and also a major predisposing factor of atopic dermatitis when it has a loss of the function of mutation. This is very important. So, from both ichthyosis and atopic dermatitis, and yes, it is filagran. Yes, absolutely. Remember that the filagrin is component of the cornified cell envelope and the mutation is mainly in the ichthyosis vulgaris, okay? Keratin 1, you can see it in lots of other disease, epidermolytic ichthyosis, diffuse non-epidermolytic palmoplantar keratoderma and diffuse epidermolytic palmoplantar keratoderma. Placoglobin causes of this is important as well, a nexus disease, um, acantholytic, epidermolytic um, um, uh, dysplasia, and lethal congenital epidermolysis pollosa. Dysmoblacan, striated palmoplantar keratoderma, and Carvajal syndrome. Okay. Which of the following are a marker for dendritic cell? I guess most of you get this question a bit wrong as well. Okay, yes, well done. It is C, yes, it's CD86. Some of the people, they wrote CD20. So just remember, where can you find CD20? How about CD20? It is a B-cell marker, absolutely right, yes. CD11A? Ligand cells. Leaf 1, remember that, yes, component of leaf 1. CD8? Yes, it's a T-cell marker, CD33. Yeah. 
that's quite difficult. <laughs> Transmembrane receptor expressed in myeloid lineage. Okay. But you get it right, Dr. Muhammad. Okay. Which of the following anatomical structure is the most likely to serve during this repair? Mental nerve, angular artery, buccal nerve, inferior labial artery, marginal mandibular nerve. So people in between D, D, and mental. No, let me see. That is correct with the inferior labial artery. You have to remember your anatomy. This is very important. So see how the, how the inferior labial artery go all the way around the lip. Okay. And this is very important when you repair the defect on the lower lip mainly. Okay. Okay. Question nine. The child with a skin lesion shown here first noted at a several week of age. He appears short of his age and has a history of recurrent respiratory infection. He is at increased risk of all of the following except. Yes, absolutely right. It's salt and pepper retinal pigmentation. And that's the syndrome is Bloom syndrome. You are correct, Dr. Jawahar. And as you know that it is an autosomal recessive disorder due to BLEM gene mutation. And the patient present with buccoloderma on the face that you see and the extremity and recurrent infection with the respiratory and GI. Okay, salt and pepper pigmentation Usually, we'll see it in cocaine syndrome, okay, not on a bloom syndrome. You have to remember your genetic. Okay, let's go to question 10. This is a 32 years old man who has two sisters, each with melanoma, and his father died of metastatic pancreatic cancer, so two things in one. You suspect germline mutation of which of the following gene? Absolutely right. Now, all of you agreed that it is D, second 2A, and you remember that because they have two things, familial melanoma and the cancer syndrome, so two things in one, so second 2A will go two in one, okay, also with the CD4, okay, um, uh, and the other, but these are very important for the two to be present, okay. Uh, do you remember that PTCH is associated with which syndrome? That's a very important syndrome. Yes, it's Coraline syndrome, yes. Just to, to refresh your mind. Okay, let's go to question 11. Patient to present with photodistributed erythema, hyperpigmentation, cerebral ataxia, mild intellectual disability, and amino acid urea, which of the following get treatment for this syndrome? Yes, Dr. Jawahar. Yes, you are absolutely right, Dr. Muhammad as well. It's eicotenic acid, and that's described the heart disease, which is caused by a faulty transport of amino acid and decreased absorption of tryptophan. Okay, and it is characterized by the photodistributed erythema, the hyperpigmentation, the cerebral ataxia, and the psychiatric disturbance. And Patients should have nicotinic acid and eat high protein diet as a treatment wise. Okay, I get your point. No problem, Dr. Jawahar. Keep it up. I want all of you to be active as Dr. Jawahar. Okay, which of the following is team would best highlight the elastic fiber changes in pseudoxanthoma elasticum? in between C and D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is C, okay, for the people who said C, yes, thumb up. Okay, quick review, because since we have two, two answers, Gimza, it does a stain mast cell, remember that, Montana medicine stain stained the melanin black, Verhoeven van Giesen stained the elastic fiber black, and the collagen red, and the nerve yellow. So it is not that specific. It is not very specific, okay? 
the fight is thin as it fast pass away. Okay. Question 13. Question. Allergic. Yes? Can I ask a question? For that previous question, yeah. I, I initially got it wrong, like, on the test because I thought that, but I guess because PXC, you have, like, calcification of the elastic fiber, so you want to see the calcium, correct? That's why you're using Vancosa? Yeah. Is that the thought behind that versus VVG, which only stain the elastic fibers black? Yes, it, is, it does stain, but we want it to be very specific for the pseudoxanthoma elasticum. But right. when you put the Vancosa, it will stain lots of other things as well, so it will not be that specific for it. Got it. Thank you. Yes, yes. Because it's mentioned that the best, it's the best to highlight the elastic fiber. It will highlight it, but some it will not be that specific for it. Got it. Thank you. Okay, welcome. So uh, that's why you have to concentrate on the question. Some of them will be really a bit, you know, confusing you, but just concentrate. Some of them will give you a little bit of two choices, but they want the best out of it. So yes, some of them are really kind of, you know, you will stuck in between. Just go with the thing that is really kind of a specific for the stain and for the elastic fiber exactly, for the thing that you really want to see it, okay? Okay, let's go. Okay, so allergic contact dermatitis caused by primrose plant is mediated by which sensitizer? I think I get the answer as well. <laughs> Yet it says Bremen. Okay, and as you know that primrose, so just remember primrose, Bremen, as allergic contact dermatitis that is mediated by it. Uh, the dial sulfite is found in the garlic, okay, and the lactone is found in the composite family. Colophon is found in the uh, pinus tree, and uh, toluposide is found in the periuvin lily, okay? Question 14. Which of the following medication would likely exacerbate your patient's psoriasis? Well, okay. Yeah, we get all of the answer right. Yes, it is metoprolol. And don't forget the several, several drug is considered to be as inducer for the psoriasis among the methylethium, the beta blocker, the anti-malaria, the interferon, and the terpenophene, and as well as the lipid lowering drug among them is gimme fibrosal. Okay, we have one patient who, who was in lipid lowering drug and that induces a psoriasis. So just remember all the drug that is causing. And mainly if the patient um, is hi hypertensive, so it's better to start the patient on a calcium channel blocker than the beta blocker, okay? So keep that in mind as well. The last question. This is a 20 years old woman started with lamotrigine three weeks ago. She takes no other medication and has no comorbid condition. Her urine beta HCG is positive. Which of the following treatment has theoretically lowest the fetal risk? Okay, so we all agree that etana receptor is the best. And yes, um, as you know that the, this woman, she has 10. So she has toxic epidermolysis necrosis. And it is secondary to the medication that she was started on, on lamotrigine, okay? So the treatment, as you know, that the treatment of the ten is controversial, but, and it does consider prednisolone, IVIG, and cyclosporine. But etanorecept is the only one among them that is category B, so that's why it's, it's going to be the safest for this patient. Rituximab is not an option, it's not a treatment for ten, okay? So remember the category of the medication as well. And thank you, well done for the quiz. And it will go to Dr. Amin to start the clinical cases. Dr. Amin, is all to you. Yeah, hi, thank you uh, very much for this, uh, for this uh, amazing uh, session. Uh, where did you take that last uh, photo? This does not look like a couple. 
<laughs> no, no, it's actually from one of the quizzes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, um, let's see. Um, let me just uh, up, uh, share my screen. Does everyone see my screen? Hello? Yes. yes okay. We okay, good. So we'll, we'll give you all five minutes because we'll said, we said we're going to start at, uh, at uh, uh, the 30 minute mark. Um, do you have any questions uh, regarding the, uh, the, present, the, the questions earlier to Dr. Uh, uh, Lauda? Do you find the quiz helpful? Like, is it because it's I'm taking it from different resources? So, um, just have to refresh your mind and keep you push for a reading as well. So, uh, do you find them useful? Yes, they're really great. Thank you. Thank you so much, and keep it up with the answering. Really, the scores this time is really perfect. Yeah, I think uh, the last uh, two points uh, or two questions you mentioned are very, very important clinical pearls for both uh, the residents and any, any physicians who have their own clinic here, like especially the, the Tanercept. I, I do urge all the, all the doctors who are here and uh, listening to this uh, presentation and people who they know also always keep a sample of Tanercept in your in your clinic or in your offices, because you know sometimes uh, where in many institutions, if you want to prescribe a tenacept, it, it it takes a, a long process of like several days before being approved, and that might be you know um, uh, too late uh, to give uh, the patient the the, the medication uh, when they get when they have uh, um, SGS or ten. So so always have a sample with you in clinic, so that as soon as you see the patient, immediately from the first day of admission, you give them the tenacept. And it, it, it has a very good uh, um, uh, uh, rate of uh, improving the, the patient and uh, preventing uh, widespread blistering and, and reduces mortality. Um, and then the other one uh, about lithium and psoriasis, so that's, uh, that's definitely uh, have been also in my, like, you know, in my experience, like, you know, when you get, when you have a erythrodermic patient, for example, and uh, you know, they take uh, lithium, it is uh, definitely psoriasis until proven otherwise, because the, uh, one of the medications that most commonly causes the erythroderma and psoriasis is uh, is uh, lithium. So that's I think those last two questions were were very good clinical pearls, and uh, the others are all uh, other questions. I all reminded me of uh, the days when I was resident, and yes, uh, uh, you really need to know all of these. Uh, all of these uh, uh, important pieces of information, like you know the stains and the uh, and the the, the, the markers and uh, and uh, the, the mnemonics, for example, mad pores. I remember I used to know these by heart for the for the exam. And uh, it's good to to keep them uh, these information with you later on because they're also very helpful uh, clinically. Um, any other comments or questions? Yes, absolutely right, Dr. Amin, because uh, the talk of last year in the American Academy, even this year as well, regarding the Tana Recept, and they did a comparison between the Tana Recept and Cyclosporine about the efficacy and how it is safe and much more like effective than the Cyclosporine, the IVIG, and the prednisolone as well. So we are going forward with all of these biological era. So um, yes, we should keep this all the time in our mind and you can start the patient as soon as possible and it's a life saving. Agreed, agreed. Um, does everyone see my screen? Uh, is it full screen with, you, with everyone here or do you see it as an unopened uh, PowerPoint? It's a full screen. It's a full screen, okay, perfect. So I think we can uh, we can uh, we can start I think right now because we just hit the half hour mark. So uh, yeah, we have a lot a lot of cases for you today. So 
guys remember the faster you answer uh, the more cases you'll get to see so let's dive in immediately come on differential diagnosis for this one I'll throw an EKV what oh I said I was gonna throw an EKV EKV Oh, yeah. like a valvulus. Okay, that, that that's a possible the differential diagnosis. You see the 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 blanching erythematous areas, but remember, we 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 uh, there, there's no uh, keratotic lesion, so that will make it a little less likely. Uh, st Stills disease. Stills disease is a very good differential diagnosis. Yes, uh, that's uh, that's a very good differential diagnosis. Someone said uh, Mahmoud said articular vasculitis, which I agree with. SLE, I also agree with. Urticaria, serum, definitely. Serum sickness. Serum sickness, absolutely. Serum sickness is a good differential diagnosis. Figure to a differential diagnosis, yes. So very good differential diagnosis here. And, uh, uh, and pemphigoid, of course, uh, early bullous pemphigoid can definitely have this. So age of the patient would be very helpful. Um, okay, hence here. Look at the center of the lesion on some of the lesions. So still the disease, uh, regular urticaria, Lupus would not usually, I mean, lupus maybe, but generally they would not leave this dusky, almost bruised uh, uh, appearance in the center. Even bullous pemphigoid would not leave uh, this uh, uh, bruised center. So that's a hint before you see the, the histology. And then when you see the histology, it does confirm what, uh, what you may have in mind and what, what features are we seeing here? Vasculitis. Vasculitis. So there's uh, Lucas, that's a classic vasculitis. And uh, I noticed several of you have thought of urticaria and, and, and similar uh, differentials. So when you have vasculitis and a clinical feature of, uh, features of urticaria, so you know that this is urticaria vasculitis. Can anyone tell me quickly what are the, the causes? Oh, sorry, I skipped. What are the causes of urticaria vasculitis? Causes of urticaria vasculitis. No one? Hello? So drugs, which drugs? Sulfa and TTNF. Uh, in my in my experience, the the the, the class of drugs that most commonly causes uh, um, urticaria vasculitis have been NSAIDs. Um, uh, uh, there have been uh, I, I I I have seen uh, uh, once uh, sulfa drug causing it, but the NSAIDs is usually the most common cause of it. But there are more important and more sincere causes of urticaria vasculitis as well. You got infections, uh, very important, hepatitis, um, uh, strep sometimes can cause urticaria vasculitis. And then there are definitely more serious uh, ones like lupus or connective tissue disease, which are usually hypocomplementemic. So whenever you see a patient with, uh, with uh, um, urticaria vasculitis, definitely the next step is to do a serum complement level. And I, I like to do an ANA as well to, to, to make sure. Leukemia, yes, it can cause it. Malign some malignancies, including leukemias, can cause it. Um, yes, and we had hepatitis, yes. So um, work up the patient uh, for these uh, causes. And then uh, uh, if it's uh, idiopathic or not associated with any of these, uh, you can treat it with the treatments like Dabstone, Colchicine, and if it's too severe, you can use systemic steroids. And if there's an underlying cause, you treat the underlying cause. Let's move on. Okay. Differential diagnosis here. Flagell disease, but possibly, uh, Diego's disease. Flagell disease usually presents with uh, a tiny um, keratotic lesions. So uh, this is more of hypopigmented, but yeah, I agree with you. This could look, uh, I mean, from this uh, power or this, uh, uh, yeah, from this power, you, it could look like a keratotic lesion. So and it's an extremity. I would not say no to flagell disease. Uh, Antiphospholipid syndrome, definitely. Diego's disease is correct. Daria, um, if it was just hypopigmentation, but you, you can tell that this lesion is not just a hypopigmentation. It, 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 it looks like it does have substance in it. So. So if it was just macular hypopigmentation in the extremities, I would think of Daria. So not really for this one. So flagels, decos, uh, APLS. If this was a lower extremity, 
Um, Eruptodermatofibromas, uh, maybe? Eruptodermatofibromas, the hypopigmented. definitely, yeah. They can look very hypopigmented, yeah. Eruptodermatofibromas can have this appearance. A lividoid vascular epithy can look like this. I don't know why this image is not, the next image is not appearing. I just had a, a, a higher power of this uh, lesion. So let's see here with the, with the histology. Uh, does it uh, sway you towards any of the differential we talked about? So um, what we see here um, is some thickening of the of the vessel wall, yes, but uh, and that might make you think of lividoid vasculopathy, yes. But uh, more than that, there's, there's damage to the vessel walls. If you can see here, the vessels next to it, there's damage to the vessel walls. And there's a lot of lymphocytes, uh, much more than you would want to see with the lividoid vasculopathy. Um, and, and the lymphocytes, some of them, if you notice, they're, they're breaking apart. So it's a, it's a leukocytoclastic uh, lymphocytic vasculitis. So another neutrophilic leukocytoclastic vasculitis, leukocytoclastic new, uh, lymphocytic uh, vasculitis. Which entity is going to give you this uh, feature? Cutaneous collagenous vasculopathy. Cutaneous collagenous vasculopathy usually would give us the um, thickening of the vessel wall, yes, but it's not a very uh, inflammatory disorder. It's, it's more of a, um, a vasculopathic disorder, which uh, would not have that much uh, lymphocytes around it. HOP blanche, um, is, uh, uh, again, is another word for lividoid vasculopathy. The, 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 you, you, one of you said the diagnosis earlier. It would be Dago's disease. See, see lymphocytic vasculitis or lymphocytic leukocytoclastic vasculitis, um, you find it in, in only a few entities. Um, perineosis is an example. Um, uh, rickettsial infections is another example. And most uh, sincerely and most ominously, and fortunately very rarely, um, is, uh, is a Dago's disease. Um, so this is a case of Dago's disease. If you can look back at the, uh, the clinical, you can see the hypopigmented uh, pearly uh, uh, atrophic lesions. I, I, I don't know why I lost the, the image here. There's supposed to be an image here that's closer. And then you got your lymphocytic vasculitis here, you can see. I, 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 I do understand why you guys think of collagenous vasculopathy and, uh, and uh, lividoid vasculopathy because you saw the thickened vessel wall. But uh, do, don't uh, uh, fail to notice the lymphocytic uh, 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 inflammation around the, 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 the blood vessels. So this is a case of Diego's. Can anyone tell me quickly what treatment you use for Diego's disease? So too little, too much is the the, the next category of uh, slides I'll show. But anyone can tell me the the the, the, the most recent and the best treatment for uh, for uh, uh, Michal, correct? Uh, Ecolizumab, very good. So so in the past, uh, Diego's disease was seen mostly as a vaso occlusive or a vasculopathic condition. So we used to give them like aspirin, heparin, and, and warfarin, and patients died anyways. But uh, ecolizumab, uh, um, uh, is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's an anti-complement uh, disorder, but I might be wrong. I think it's an anti-complement disorder. It's seen mostly, yes, you see, you see if I, Michelle is confirming, he's, uh, he's giving me his seal of approval. So yes, he's saying C5 to 9, and I agree. So it's an anti-complement uh, antibody, and, uh, and with the recent understanding that it's more of an inflammatory disorder, um, we're starting to give this treatment, and this has been shown to be effective in reducing the mortality of Diego's disease, which usually is caused by bowel perforations or, or cerebrovascular events. So next category is too little, too much. I want you to tell me uh, first of uh, the diagnosis and, and uh, is this caused by too little of something or too much of something? So we kind of talk about deficiencies and excesses of, uh, of entities. So what is this? Too much of it. Too much of what? Correct, too much of what? Keratinemia. So much of keratin, very good. Keratinemia or keratinoderma. So keratinoderma, yeah, the locations that are primarily affected are sebaceous areas of the face and the palms and soles. So it's uh, you either due to uh, increased intake of keratin, which is, uh, I have to say, the, the, the less likely of causes, but the more likely of causes is that 
the inability to get rid of or metabolize the carotene, which uh, occurs in, 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 uh, in what uh, disorders? In uh, thyroid disorder, very good. Uh, hypothyroidism and diabetes, and in anorexia as well. Um, uh, unless the patient is like, you know, Bugs Bunny eating uh, uh, carrots from morning to night, um, it's uh, not that likely to be just because of excess intake but um, uh, usually it's because of inability to metabolize it or get uh, rid of it. So very good. Too little or too much? Noma disease. Noma, very good. Is this, is this Amy? Hi. Oh, very good, very good. So, so yeah, very good uh, answer. So, this is Noma. Um, uh, this uh, and this is caused by too little of something or too much of something. Is this too little or too much? So, I don't hear anyone answer. I'll just answer. So, this is too little. Usually occurs in in uh, severe uh, nutritional deficiencies. The immune system goes a little bit down, and uh, the theory behind it, but I mean, it's not 100% sure, but the theory behind it is that the, the, the immunity goes low, so the, 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 the microbes in the oral in the, in the mouth uh, that are normally commensal start to become pathogenic, and the patient gets long-term necrotizing infections in the, in the mucous membrane. Uh, uh, so giving this feature, it's a very, very terrible condition. Um, 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 again, just more images of it, so you, could, you guys should be aware of, uh, of its existence. Um, it uh, usually occurs in, in, in the settings of uh, severe um, uh, nutritional deficiencies, and it's the, the underlying etiology, like I said, is, uh, is infective. Too little or too much? So someone says, what disease? Uh, again, NOMA, N-O-M-A. So, so um vitamin a so this one complex. could could be vitamin a um or multi yeah or because vit vitamin because vitamin a leads to increase the uh, increase the triglyceride and uh so no this is not vitamin a deficiency this is excess this is eruptive xanthoma uh, very oh, good for those who answer the xanthoma it's due to increased triglyceride very good this too little or too much, and what it is? What is it? It's digital mixoid It looks like a digital mixoid cyst, but it is not. Mm -hmm. So this is gout. Very good, Michal. So gout. So um, so is it too much or too little? Too much of what? Of uric acid, uric very acid. good. Uric acid. Much, very good. Too much uric acid. Moving on. So again, so I just uh, use put this. So if you didn't know the diagnosis earlier, so you can see the features. We talked about it in one of our previous uh, sessions. So I won't uh, focus on this very much. You can see the feathery. So can anyone tell me? Anyone who's smart tell me has this been fixed in alcohol? Or has this been fixed in formalin? This has not been fixed in alcohol because if it was, we would see the crystals more clearly. They would be like, you know, brownish, more richly colored here. When it's, just, when it's fixed in formalin, we can see this just uh, wispy, uh, feathery uh, remnants. So, I mean, this should be fixed in alcohol, but uh, in this case, it hasn't. Okay, moving on. Too little or too much? And what is it? <coughs> Scurvy. Scurvy, very good. Why would what made you think of scurvy? Corkscrew hair. Corkscrew hair, very good. You can see on histology, you see the hair. When it's a corkscrew hair and you cut it on one section, you can see like you know hair coming in and out of multiple directions. So this is all like one hair that has a corkscrew uh, appearance. So one of the one of the important features of scurvy is corkscrew hair, which you can see it here clinically. Very good. Um. Very good answers, everyone. Um, for some reason, uh, Jawaha just uh, disappeared now from the scene. She you, she owned that uh, that uh, Q and A session, but now she just uh, decided to retire. I, I think. Um, okay, uh, too little or too much.
Nutritional deficiency, very good. So by definition, too little. Okay, very good, too little. Um, so um, what is this? What type of uh, nutritional deficiency is this? Zinc. Zinc, very good. What other settings can give us uh, a zinc deficiency like picture? Acromatite to centropathica. So that is also the same as zinc deficiency. What, what other conditions yeah. can give us a uh, feature similar to acromatite centropathica? Not really histocytosis. I'm looking for some, someone to say something like biotin deficiencies, cystic fibrosis, these patients, and, and, and even uh, in necrolytic migratory edema, can also cause uh, features similar to, to this. So moving on. Too little or too much? Little. Too little, very good. Again, nutritional yeah. deficiency. And what, what do we call this finding? Perlet. Perlish, yeah, or, or, or angular yeah. chylitis, Iron very good. So when you get patients with the angular chylitis, the first thing you usually normally think of is, is fungal. You can scrape it and, and see and, and then give it maybe a trial of antifungal. But if it doesn't improve, you should start to think of other entities like, you know, contact derm or, or, or um, uh, nutritional deficiency. Very good. Too little or too much? Little. Too little. Too little of what though? Even though I don't think it is too little of something. Tyrosinemia is a uh, genoderm. I want to focus on genoderms now, but um, again, tyrosinemia usually causes uh, uh, the, the numular type of PPK rather than this uh, type of PPK, which I mean, if you, if you really notice, it, it looks like an older person's leg rather than a young person's leg. So if it was younger, I would think of tyrosinemia. Too much, exactly, very good, Hassan. Too much of, uh, so, so basically this is too much of everything. So <laughs> a person who consumes too much of everything, they're gonna gain weight and gonna get this condition, what we call a keratoderma climactericum, which is a, an acquired keratoderma occurring in people who are usually older and usually in females and usually uh, most almost always in, in those who uh, are of a high weight so too much so this condition you can have like a, um, uh, a leathery skin uh, again here if you like features and a clinical yes. hint is that this patient has poor wound healing increased infections and on tpn diagnosis Too little, yes, too little of what? I have to admit that this condition, I have never personally seen it in real life other, except for uh, in uh, books. But uh, no, it's not little, uh, too little immunoglobulin. Fatty acid, very good. So essential fatty acid deficiency, linoleic, linolenic, or echidonic acid deficiencies. Um, they almost never occur in, in, uh, alone, usually in, in, in a very in, uh, immunodeficiencies, uh, or I mean nutritional deficiencies of everything. But in, in places where there's no, the nutritional deficiency is not very uh, common, usually it's seen in patients on TPN with little uh, essential fatty acid supplements. Okay, so enough of uh, too little and too much. We we'll go for uh, regular cases. What uh, syndrome is this? AEC, very AAC. good. Acrylobifron, ectodermal dysplasia, and clefting syndrome. Very good. It's, 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 it's uh, one of the hereditary ectodermal, ectodermal dysplasia. You can see acrylobifron here. And uh, very commonly when they're born, they have, uh, um, other than the, they can be born in a collagen membrane, they can be uh, uh, they can, uh, infants can have a very bad erosive dermatitis, especially in the scalp area. Okay, clinical pathological here. So first of all, what's your differential diagnosis for this lesion? Facial lesion, not much uh, epidermal features, mainly dermal. Lupus tumidus, very good. Uh, that's what I would think when I first see this. Anything else? Granuloma faciale, very good. 
Green name Lofi Fiali. Um, Lupa Tumidus so far. Very good uh, differential. Anything else? Lishmaniasis. Lishmaniasis is very good. I mean, early in Lishmaniasis or in Lishmaniasis events, for example, the granular masses type, you can have these uh, features. Um, lupus vulgaris, very good. Early lupus vulgaris. A melanotic melanoma. It's, it's, it's a little too big, but uh, I mean, uh, it's not out of the question, just, uh, possibly. No. Lympho lymphocytic lymphocytes of Jessner are very good, Jessner yes, infiltrate, or lymphocytoma, very good, or even B cell lymphoma can look like this. So let's see the histology. So it is one of the so things you guys mentioned. So what features are we seeing here? Granuloma faciale from uh, Michelle. So like I said, I, I, I like to describe this as two entities, as, as a Lucas Aciclastic Vesculitis and a party which everyone's invited in because uh, any type of inflammatory cell, cell you can think of, you will find it here in the infiltrate. You'll find plasma cells, you'll find the eosinophils, you'll find lymphocytes, you'll find neutrophils, you find histiocytes, you find everything. Everyone's invited here. Next. Piezogenic pedal papules, very good. Next is, let's, let's move on quickly. Next is. Nobody? Acryl fibrokeratoma, very good. Digital acryl, uh, acquired digital fibrokeratoma. You can see the color it around it. And uh, yes, this is acquired digital fiber keratin. What's the differential diagnosis for this? Accessory digit. Accessory digit, very good. Yeah. Accessory digit can sometimes, even though accessory digit usually occurs on the base of the, of the, of the small uh, finger, the fifth digit. But uh, it's, I mean, it can occur in uh, unusual locations. Traumatic neuroma can also, also occur in this area, but uh, this is a case of uh, actual digit, acquired digital fiber keratoma, ADF. So this is a basically histology diagnosis, but you can see here an ulcerated nodule in the scalp of an older uh, person. And this is what you see on histology. So what would your differential diagnosis be here? Atypical... Uh, Fibro what? Atypical fibrohistocytic tumor. Atypical fibrosarcoma, very good. So that's a, a primary differential diagnosis, but what else? Is this the only, is, is, it, is AFX the only spindle cell tumor that can be seen in, uh, with an ulcerated nodule? What kind of sarcoma, Jawahar? So DFSP um, does not usually present with an ulcerated nodule this way, and, uh, and DFSP cells are not this atypical. So less likely, I have to say, but uh, I would uh, stay in it for CD34. Fibrosarcoma usually has a herringbone pattern. I would, I mean, a few guys, uh, you need to know the more common and more important entities, like, you know, uh, um, for example, atypical or sarcomatous uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Sarcomatous cell carcinoma can sometimes be very spindle shaped. Um, you should think of a melanotic, a melanotic melanoma, which also could be spindle shaped. Uh, and you should think of angiosarcoma also, which sometimes can be, develop a spindle shaped cell or a lyomyosarcoma, very good, Michel, right? Lyomyosarcoma. These are the entities that you should think of more, more, mostly. So again, you can see here, the cells are very atypical. So um, this patient had a negative CD31, S100, cytokeratin marker, markers. So S100 rules out melanoma, cytokeratin rules out, rules out uh, um, SCC, CD31 kind of rules out uh, um, um, uh, um, angiosarcoma. And uh, let's see, we did uh, uh, Desmond and we did um, CD34 and we ruled out the other entities. And only smooth muscle actin was positive. The diagnosis would be like Hassan said, atypical fibers and thoma. So uh, AFX is a diagnosis of exclusion. Usually when everything is negative, you don't need a positive SMA to diagnose it, but it helps. Moving on. So everyone knows that I like to ask about genoderm. So this uh, category is not 
genoderms. We'll be talking about pediatric germs that are not genoderms. So, what is this? Do we have another slide? No, we don't have another slide. So, what is this? Bart syndrome, very good Aplasia. differential. Aplasia cutis. Um, Aplasia cutis. Very good, very good. Aplasia cutis. Aplasia cutis is a very good differential diagnosis. Anything else? Gold syndrome. Gold syndrome, very good. Gold syndrome is a very good differential diagnosis. So yeah, um, anyways, um, if I included genoderms, I'm sure you're gonna, you guys are gonna have a lot of uh, differential diagnosis, like for example, epidemiologist bullosa and other entities, but you're, you guys were very smart in picking things that are not uh, genoderms. So, so the, the correct diagnosis, of course, here is aplasia cutis. This is the, 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 the BART uh, type, and uh, this is a more typical example, as you can see here in the scalp, which you usually expect to see. Um, but uh, always remember, sometimes aplasia cutis can develop in areas that uh, are normally not, uh, not uh, like, you know, not in the scalp or in the midline. Okay, what is this? Syphilis. Syphilis, congenital syphilis. The most, the most common feature or the earliest feature for congenital syphilis would be rhinitis or snuffles. And the other features here are also very helpful, like, you know, the, 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 the aerosif lesions and the extremities and, and, and the, 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 the features that mimic, like, you know, the psoriasiform features in the, in the diaper area and the rest of the body. See, one, uh, very rarely you would see erosive lesions in syphilis, but uh, uh, most commonly you would see them with the, with the congenital syphilis. So very good, congenital syphilis. What is this? Again, pediatric patients, and you can give yourself the luxury of excluding uh, genoderms. I can't hear. So bleeding disorder, not really. No, and bleeding disorders, uh, uh, many of them are genetic, but uh, I know some of them aren't, but uh, no, there's not a bleeding disorder. Vasculitis, any vasculitis? Vasculitis is a very good differential diagnosis. Um, I, I like vasculitis as a, differential, as a differential diagnosis. Um, let's, see, let's say that a biopsy was done and there was no vasculitis and the patient said that they have mild arthralgia for a few days, mild fever, so yes, parvovirus is very good for parvoviral exanthem and Michel parvovirus. So this is parvovirus infection. What what type of parvoviral infection are we talking about here? Is this hydroxyphetalis? Is this flat cheek syndrome? Is this erythema infectiosum? Is this a plastic crisis? EB EB virus also. Um, what? Would it be hand hand foot and mouth? I mean, uh, there's no vesicles or blisters, though. But uh, this is, I, I mean, uh, so the answer pa is pa parvovirus. Papular purpuric uh, gloves and socks. Yeah, glove and sock syndrome of, uh, of, uh, of uh, parvovirus. Very good. So um, very often when you see patients with glove and sock syndrome or any parvovirus infection, it's, it's worth checking out the oral mucosa because you can get palatal petechiae. So that helps your diagnosis. It doesn't have to be there, but... Uh, but uh, it, it sometimes is and uh, helps you make your diagnosis. So these patients, they, I mean, if the patient doesn't have any uh, sickle cell disorder or doesn't have any immunodeficiency, you, can, you just reassure them and, uh, or, or you assure the parents and uh, tell them that this is all going to be fine. Next disorder or next uh, condition. Pleva, very good. So, so it looks like pleva. Uh, what else can look like this um, uh, in terms of differential diagnosis? Chickenpox, why not? LYP. LYP, very good. Lymphomatoid papillosis, very good. Nothing else? 
I always like to add syphilis in the differential diagnosis because it can look like anything and mm. it can present with a rash. Okay, so let's see the histology. Histology, I think, is very straightforward. What do we see here? So we see an interface dermatitis. And in the previous image, you can see um, there's a, a, a white shaped infiltrate, parakeratosis with some uh, neutrophils in the stratum corneum. So these are all features of what? Cleva. Cleva, perseratus lichenoides, it's very enormous, acute, very good, very good. Moving on. Daria? Daria disease, it's a good differential diagnosis, although this it's not the best age for presentation of daria, but uh, usually it's uh, later in the first decade or in the second decade, but it's a good differential diagnosis. Langerhans cell histiocytosis is another very good differential diagnosis. Um, let's see histology. What does the histology tell us? Is it, uh, is it telling of, of anything? LCH. You can LCH, see. very good. So you can see a lot a lot of Langer hand cells here. Very good. Mastocytoma, very good. Anything else in the differential diagnosis? Could be JXG, very good. I like JXG for this one. Common location for this, but uh, JXG is a good differential diagnosis. Uh, poroma can occur in this area, and like an ideal. Um, if, if this was just acute and it subsides, we can call it deep pressure urticaria. Um, let's see the histology. Histology is pretty forward here. What does this look like? Do I have a larger one? No, I don't have a larger one. This is, uh, this is it. So, Mashal. Mastocytoma, very good. Mastocytoma, you got a lot of mastocytoma here. So we have a egg appearance. So what do we see here? Something here in the neck. So um, there's a, a little notch here. And yes, when you see a notch in an area, especially in the neck area, you think of either like a fistula or you think of like a type of cyst. And the types of cysts you should think of that occur in the central neck. One of them is thyroglossal cyst. What other kind of cysts can present here? Bronchogenic cysts can present in this location. Very good. Let's see the histology. What does the histology show? Ciliated epithelium. Uh, what would the ciliated epithelium uh, uh, make you think of? Is it thyroglossal or bronchogenic more? Bronchogenic. Bronchogenic cyst more. Very good. So this is a bronchogenic cyst, this type of developmental cyst. Premature infant. Premature uh, neonate, let's say. Well, candidiasis. Oh, very good. Disseminated candidiasis. So so disseminated candidiasis can give a really uh, a TEN-like picture in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a premature infant. And uh, it is supported when you do a, like either a biopsy or you do a scraping. You'll see numerous uh, candida, like you see a pseudohyphae. You can notice here they're more vertical, which is a very good way to differentiate them from, from actual hyphae, which are usually horizontal. So this is a, a candida, disseminated uh, congenital candidiasis. Is this a life-threatening condition or does this usually subside very quickly? Life-threatening. This is life-threatening and, and you would treat it with, uh, with the systemic antifungals in order to, to save the life of the patient. Anyone? Atrophidema pazini, very good. Maria Malnogem, who has been, who has been 
pretty quiet so far today, and uh, she came out, came back with a with a with a with a vengeance, with a very good answer. So it's a video of Perini, Pazzini and Perini, very good. Um, so you can see here the, the the subtle depressions here. Some call this a, a form of morphia or, or a phase of morphia. Some would uh, like to separate it and consider it a, a, its own entity. Um, Treatment is very limited for it. Uh, the only thing you can do is reduce the color by lasers, but other than that, not much can be done. Okay, differential diagnosis here. Fixed drug reaction. Very good, fixed, fixed drug, drug reaction is a very good differential diagnosis. Very good, so you can see a darker area with the erythematous border. Anything else would be in, in, in your differential diagnosis for this? I have to agree with you that you know when I if I see this for the first time I would I would think of a fixed drug but I always like to have a differential diagnosis because I before biopsying I don't like to be fixated on one diagnosis so spider bites I, I agree spider bites can look like this and it's an extremity so it, I mean uh, it's possible necrotic spider bites uh, bruise from from any other cause yeah why not what else. Mastocytoma isolated. Uh, I mean, localized. possibly, even though mastocytomas don't usually give a bruise like appearance. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. I, I, I like to add, for example, like an aureus, you know, it's in an extremity, it's, it's, it's bruised, it's circumscribed. Mm -hmm. So it could be like an aureus. Um, let's see the histology, what, if, it, if it tells us anything. So what, what pattern of inflammation do you see here? There's an interface dermatitis. So among the differential diagnosis that we talked about, which entity is an interface dermatitis? Big drug eruption, very good. And you can see your pigment incontinence, you can see your acute stratum corneum, uh, and you can see your necrotic keratinocytes all over the, the, the epidermis. So very good, fixed drug eruption. Again here, I don't know why I gave you this uh, other image just to uh, highlight the, the features. You can see necrotic keratinocytes along with the, the interface change um, uh, is, a, is, a, is a feature or both are features of fixed drug eruption. Differential diagnosis here. Mixedema. Mixedema is a good differential Mixedema. diagnosis. Very good differential, what else? And and your edema, Andrew very edema. good. Morbid hands. Morbid hands, very good. If the patient had long-term uh, rosacea or acne, but, uh, especially rosacea, I like morbid hands. I actually didn't think of this, but, uh, but uh, good that you mentioned it. Contact dermatitis, of course. Contact dermatitis can present this way. Yeah. Dermatomyositis, very good. Dermatomyositis. So, so far, you guys are, are really uh, giving me good differential diagnosis for this. Angioedema, Morbihan, DM, um, contact derm, carcinoid, uh, very, very good. Um, so this might look like very unusual, but I think, I think it was two weeks or, or, or four weeks ago in BI clinic, we, we saw this uh, in the, uh, very similar entity with even more edema. And um, these were the histology features. So, so what do we see here? What features? Can anyone describe to me the, 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 the epidermal and dermal features? Where is Amy Huang? She disappeared. Hi, there's a basal layer atypia, I think, and extravasate, well, uh, maybe some hemosiderin. Yeah, how, how thick does the epidermis look? Atrophic. Atrophic epidermis. And, and what we see here is, is colloid and sebat bodies that imply what has happened here before. A psoriasis Oh, maybe it's like eruption. a burnt out something. So it's probably an interface dermatitis, right? Yes. What kind of interface dermatitis with atrophy of the epidermis can involve the sun exposed areas? Uh, like DM, dermatomyositis. Yeah. Lupus, and, maybe. Yeah. So. When you go back to this image, what would you think? 
see it. Uh, eyelid, lower eyelid edema here. Uh, dermatomyositis. Very good. Dermatomyositis. So dermatomyositis, very often you guys, I mean, not just you guys, I mean, generally people would, uh, when, you, when you go through sex, you think of like, you know, the heliotrope rash and the show sign, but what is often ignored is the, the, the amount of edema that, that dermatomyositis can give, especially in the lower eyelid and upper eyelid area. It can be very edematous. And, um, and uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we saw a patient, I mean, more edematous than this. You, would, you see this patient, you say that this patient is, uh, uh, is, uh, is angioedema, but the patient said that they have had this edema progressive for several weeks and they had like a little muscle weakness. And uh, a clinical diagnosis was given of, of uh, dermatomyositis and, uh, and histology only con uh, confirmed it. So, um, so you, guys, you guys biopsied it? Um, let me remember. I, I don't remember. If we, I think we biopsied it. But, um, but uh, I do remember that it was uh, with, uh, it was, uh, I saw it with, with Gottlieb and it was, uh, it was a clinical diagnosis of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, dermatomyositis. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not entirely sure if we did biopsy it or not, but we, I, I think we did, but uh, it was a clinical diagnosis, I have to say, from the history. Did, did he have Gottlin's papules? Uh, patient had Gottlin's papules. Did he have Gottlin's papules? It was a female patient and she did have Gottlin's papules, but, uh, but uh, the, the, the angioedema and the color of the angioedema, it was like a little violaceous and the progressive nature of it uh, uh, was very was very uh, distinguishing for uh, uh, dermatomyositis. Okay, let's move on. Um, oops, here. Lichen planus. Could be lichen planus. Very lichen good. Planus. Very good. Uh, uh, it's disseminated. Um, so drug-induced lichen planus, I guess you guys uh, already saw the, the histology, so I won't bother you or torture you with the differential. So um, uh, because it's uh, disseminated, you think of drug, and also because there's a lot of eosinophils, you would also think of uh, drug-induced. And if you notice, there's some uh, perikeratosis, which you wouldn't expect to see with the, with the regular lichen planus. So all these features point out to um, like in planets, but I like Mariam and Najun's differential diagnosis, secondary syphilis. She did not see, the, she, she wanted the, to, to play with me and, uh, and to go through the differential before the biopsy. And I, I definitely agree. If I saw this for the first time, I would think of syphilis first and then uh, like in planets because of the nature of the, the distribution. Um, but uh, histology is pretty distinctive here for uh, like in planets with the, if you notice the saw two, three ridges, the hypergranulosis. Not much of an in, then not much of a vacuolar interface, uh, largely lymphocytic. So yeah, drug induced like plants with and the isinophils, you know, are not characteristic for syphilis. Okay. Speed. Scleroedema, good differential diagnosis, very good. Amyloidosis, cutaneous amyloidosis. Uh, what type? Macula. Macula amyloidosis. Um, usually, it's hyperpigmented <laughs> rather than uh, than yeah, uh, pinkish in color. So, um, scleromyxedema, possibly, yeah, in the same line as scleroedema. Hi, mama. Hi, hi. Ushiba, but please uh, uh, mute your audio for uh, uh, for uh, noise. Um, contact dermatitis, why not? Mm. Contact derm, yeah, I like that. Mycosis fungoides? Mycosis fungoides could be, it's in a hidden area, it looks a little bit atrophic, why not? Okay, let's see the histology. What features do we see here in histology? Is it itchy? Um, not very itchy, no. The histology here is quite distinctive. There is a patchy, large perivascular infiltrate, superficial and deep perivascular infiltrate. Would you guys want to order any stains or, or markers here to, to, uh, yeah, Mishal wants mucin. Okay, we'll go for mucin for Mishal. So mucin is positive. So let's go back. There is no epidermal change though. 
No interference. Tumid lupus? So it's humid lupus, very good. Tumid lupus. Uh, um, uh, and uh, if you go back here, um, this entity sometimes is, uh, is, uh, uh, is described as overlapping with humid lupus. Um, but uh, the, uh, histologically, it looks very much the same, but um, clinically, okay. it looks a little bit different. So yes, reticular erythematomucinosis. So this is the the, I mean, this is the diagnosis I, look, I was looking for in the beginning because of like, you see how articulated it is. But um, tumid lupus and REM to me and to, 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 to many people are basically the same condition. They just like, you know, they're variants, let's say clinical variants of each other. Histologically, they're the same. Treatment wise, they're the same. Um, so yeah, REM or tumid lupus would be, would be correct for this one. Very good. Put diagnosis, a couple of cases, we want to move through them very fast. What is this? This is an extremity. Like an aureus, very good. And this? It's magic. Magic syndrome, very that's good. It. Very good, magic syndrome, and then the, that's short for what? That's the, uh, you get the relapse in uh, chondritis, you get uh, <laughs> well, it's uh, just with the relapsing chondritis. So magic is short for mouth and genital ulcers and inflamed cartilage. Very good. So magic syndrome. So bugs and uh, more bugs, infectious disorders. We'll do spot diagnosis for them quickly. So what is this? Erysipeloid. Erysipeloid, yes. Purplish uh, plaques in the distal extremity. It would help when, if you found out that you know the patient, the, the, the patient works as a butcher or, 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 or you know cuts fish or anything, uh, or works with animals. Um, this mucor, mucor, very good. So if I tell you this is infectious, you could think of things like you know NKT cell lymphomas, for example. But uh, under under the umbrella of infections, uh, mucor is the first thing you should think of when you see this entity. And uh, next. Rhinos produce Rhinos is very good. And if you do a biopsy and see these giant, giant uh, uh, organisms containing many, many endospores, uh, it would certainly help your case. Um, over here. Is it tinea? Well, I mean, uh, why not? Erysipelas, um, I mean, could be if it was uh, acute. Lupus vulgaris, very good. Lupus vulgaris is uh, is one uh, is very good differential. So tinea, lupus vulgaris. Tinea, okay. Yeah. So tinea, tinea, uh, lupus vulgaris, uh, leishmaniasis, very good. So let's see the histology if it helps. Would this help any of you round up your diagnosis? Lish. This is leishmaniasis, very good, and it certainly helps if you have a very good, like you know, microscope. And you can see the kinetoplasts, which are like you know safety pin like organ like uh, organs in front of the in front of the cells. Very good. I thought I thought leash usually looks more crusted than that. So this is a type of leishmaniasis. Can you tell me which type of leishmaniasis is this? Oh, is this new world? Um, this is the recidivans type. This is the chronic leishmaniasis oh. that is granulomatous. Okay, so the patient has a lot of uh, inflammatory reaction, as you can see here, a lot of a lot of dense reaction. So um, normally, yeah, you would see like an ulcer with leishmaniasis, but sometimes it presents in unusual ways, like, you know, this granulomatous uh, pattern. Okay, very good. I like it when you guys ask questions and uh, like, you know, you can stop me at any point and ask. So uh, what is this? This is the inguinal area. Granuloma inguinale. Granuloma inguinale is a possibility. Scrofuloderma, why not? Bubo, yeah, bubo is uh, what we are seeing, yeah, but uh, what is causing this bubo? So, um, you mean bubonic plague? It's, it's also possible. How about like a really bad lymphogranuloma venereum? Lymphogranuloma venereum also can cause it, why not? How about like a really bad syphilis? Like, bad uh, syphilis, why not? I mean, this could be a chancra. You guys said everything. Chancroid, yeah, chancroid is possible. So, let's look here. What does this tell you? Syphilis. There's a, a pattern. 
this, the, the cells, uh, they're not spirochetes, but um, they have a certain arrangement. The school of fish pattern, like, you know, they're, they're, they're continuous, like, you know, rods and, and like, you know, following each other in a single line. So which disorder gives us the school of fish appearance? What? Chancroid, chancroid, uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, um, uh, can give you, uh, what, what organism causes chancroid? Uh, Hemophilus ducre. Hemophilus ducre, very good. Ducre. So adenovinosis is, is, if I'm not mistaken, is another word for granuloma inguinale. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and uh, you treat this how? Okay, I don't want to pause here. So, uh, of course, antibiotics, but how? So, ciftriaxone or, uh, or, uh, or azithromycin, very good. So, inflammatory conditions involving a cutaneous adnexal structure that produce hair shafts and sebum, and just short for it, folliculitis. Um, let's see, different types of folliculitis. So I'm making it really easy for you guys. You can tell me what, uh, you don't have to think of like, you know, granuloma faciale or, or 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 or, or uh, uh, lupus vulgaris. So eosinophilic folliculitis. What type? Ofuji. Oh, I didn't see Fatma. She said uh, Ofuji. So um, uh, so um, let's see here. And yes, you can see with the histology, there's eosinophils around the hair follicles. So uh, I like to always make a point of there's different types of eosinophilic folliculitis. There's the one in, in infants. There's the one in HIV patients, and then the ones. There's the one that occurs mostly in, in Asian populations, the one we call Ofuji. And uh, the one that we call Ofuji is the one that presents with like annular plaques with some papules inside it. And uh, that's what we call Ofuji. It is not associated with HIV. And it is more chronic than the one that occurs in uh, infancy. How would you treat this? First line. Endomethacin, very good. So uh, Michal is very, uh, he eats up the words. He likes to like, you know, write in, in, in the first half of the word. He doesn't have time. Uh, he wants to answer before everyone else. Very good, Michal. Um, let's see. Uh, what is this? Tinea, and uh, when it involves the hair follicles, what do we call it? Mayoki granuloma, very good. Mayoki granuloma. So this kind of tinea where you cannot treat it with topicals, you have to give them oral. So what we see here is a very, very edematous uh, folliculitis. And uh, for the residents who worked with me, I always make a point of what uh, disorders can give you a granuloma, uh, a, a very um, edematous uh, folliculitis. So uh, what would your differential be here? So um, I wouldn't call this solid facial edema. Uh, granulomatous rosacea would be uh, in the differential. Lupus miliaris, usually it's more scarring, but, uh, but uh, okay, acne agmenata, which is another word for uh, for um, what we what we said earlier, um, rosacea fulminans, um, okay. What else? So edematous folliculitis, usually if it's, uh, for example, in the trunk, we think more of, uh, of uh, uh, pseudomonas folliculitis. We, if it's in the upper trunk or the face, we think of um, the eosinophilic folliculitis uh, of HIV. And if it's in the central face like this and a lot of edematous and involving the neck and the patient is a little bit immunocompromised, we would think of an entity that would show us this on histology or, or scraping. Demodex folliculitis, very good. So demodex folliculitis causes a very edematous uh, folliculitis and uh, Yes, it's, 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 it's a strong overlap with, with rosacea, yes. So, I mean, I wouldn't say no if you said, like granula, if you said granuloma does rosacea, but um, um, demodex uh, folliculitis is notoriously known for, for being edematous and occurring in immunocompromised patients. Uh, and uh, treatment for this would be how? 
Ivermectin? Ivermectin, very good. Either topical yeah. or oral ivermectin would be good to, to treat this uh, entity. So let's move on to the next, uh, to the next uh, case. Perioral dermatitis. Perioral dermatitis is a possibility, but look and see, it's, it's very crusted, very, 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 um, let's say, there's a lot of pus here, uh, crust, very strong. So, tenia, possibly, but what do you call this presentation first? Impetitionized. I call these cases psychosis, with the, without a P in the beginning, so this is oh. psychosis. So there are different types of psychosis. You've got your, uh, your staph psychosis, which is by far the most common. You've got your, your, your tenia psychosis, psychosis or psychosis, uh, psycho tenia psychosis, uh, or you've got your lupoid psychosis or herpetic psychosis. So histology usually helps us uh, determine. Uh, we didn't do histology here, but like you can see here, there is a scrape. And uh, are these fungi or are these bacteria? There's a bacteria, and there are cocci, and, and like, you know, there are staphylococci, you see? They all look at, like, you know, a cluster of grapes. So this is staphylococcal uh, uh, psychosis, or psychosis barbie. Okay, go back, look at it here. So psychosis barbie. When, uh, by far, the two most common causes here are, are, are uh, bacterial and, uh, and followed by um, uh, fungal. So histology or scraping can help you round up your diagnosis. This is extremely rare. I have personally never seen this. Uh, this I got it from a from a journal. And, Dr uh, um, Drift. What? Drift. Yeah, and uh, Dr I I know what you mean, but uh, can you tell everyone else what does Drift stand for? Disseminate and recurrent infundibular follicular. folliculitis. Very good. So histologically, this entity would show features that are also not very distinguishing. They usually show. Um, uh, spongiosis in the hair fall uh, in the in the infundibulum of the hair follicle, and it it is known that I mean it's it's, it's diagnosed based on clinical features. It's usually widespread pinpoint uh, papules that are a little itchy, and they occur in li occur in linear fashion, as you can see here, linear fashion. Um, so disseminated recurrent and recurrent infundibular folliculitis. Very rare entity. I think like I don't know, a handful of uh, of reported cases exist for this condition. I actually see it quite often at my hospital where we treat this a lot is, of um, Caribbean patients. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, uh, I, guess, I mean, yes, it is more common in Caribbean uh, um, in, uh, in, uh, nationalities, but um, interesting that you've seen uh, several of that. That's uh, that's very good. I mean, I personally haven't seen do? anyone. <laughs> I haven't seen any of them. Um, it would be interesting if you can share with us some of the, like in next time, you can email us some of the, the images from the patient. I would be interested in seeing that. So, so very, very, very interesting actually. Um, okay, so uh, what would this uh, entity be? Dissecting, yeah. So uh, dissecting cardiacus is a, is a differential diagnosis. But I would. This is more of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, tinea um, uh, folli uh, um, fo folliculitis. Um, but um, but yeah, I agree with your differential diagnosis. Fa this is a late stage of uh, favus. So I mean, favus. If 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 uh, if you see the crusted uh, uh, keratotic lesions, I would call this favus. But uh, this is just a burnt out late stage of, uh, of uh, tinea. So, um, uh, so yeah, but your differential is very good. Like you can think of, uh, as uh, Sarah said, uh, Mosiatin alopecia, which is correct for, uh, it, it could be seen with syphilis, that is correct. Um, uh, whoever said uh, uh, tufted folliculitis or, or dissecting cellula. Dissecting cellulitis would be less likely because we don't see much nodules here, but uh, it definitely isn't the differential diagnosis because sometimes you can't appreciate nodules unless you palpate them. But uh, always think of the more common entity and, uh, and uh, tinea. Uh, this is the burnt out late stage of uh, tinea infection. So uh, what about this type of folliculitis? Monomorphic, a little brownish, and uh, Michelle already saw the histology and yes. So this is uh, melatizia folliculitis, very good. And uh, on to our last category of the day. So um, we should stop by now, but do uh, you guys want to go on a little bit more, as long, as long as it takes? Yeah, keep going. And more minutes or five more minutes? Okay, let's go. So last category. Um, 
the new private part because of the COVID era, the mouth, which is the mouth. Um, so what is this? Spot diagnosis. Nicotine stomatitis, very good. Oral leukoplakia. Oral hairy leukoplakia, very good, which is occurs with EBV. And what is this? It's like bone, bone in something. I Bo bones nodule. It's actually not. Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> you um, you're getting there. It's not bone It's someone else's name, and it's not a nodule. It's another um, uh, uh, clinical feature. But it is something something. I, I give you that. Or someone's it's like something. It's some type of milia, right? It's, it's someone's something. The immune cyst. It's Epstein's pearl. So it's, it's a kind of uh, epidermoid cyst that uh, occur in the, in the oral mucosa in young individuals and uh, uh, it subsides by itself. So it's called Epstein's pearl. It is, I, I, would, yeah, I would say it's a kind of milia. It's a tiny epidermoid cyst in the oral mucosa, in the, in the, in the palatal mucosa and, uh, and uh, it subsides by itself, like I said. So Epstein's pearl, very good. Gingivitis. Strawberry gingiva. Not strawberry gingiva. Gingival hyperplasia? No. You can see there's a lot of erosion. This is discometric this, gingivitis. This is gonna... Yeah, this is a very important uh, clinical uh, sign for you to recognize. Sure, they would present mostly to a, 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 a dentist or an ENT first, but uh, we as dermatologists, we should be aware of this entity, um, discometric gingivitis. Uh, not because uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, we just need to know it, because it can point out to several disorders that are of interest to us dermatologists, like what? Like MMP, very good, and like uh, um, pemphigus vulgaris, like uh, any of the types of oral lichen planus, whether it's like lichenoid drug eruption, whether it's erosive lichen planus or regular lichen planus, contact stomatitis, they can all present with just discomative gingivitis. Uh, and uh, that's very important to recognize. Um, by far, the commonest entities that can cause this are the blistering disorders, the autoimmune ones, I mean, and the, and the lichenoid family of disorders. So discommative gingivitis is very important to, to notice. Next. Look at this part here. Anyone? Oral thrush. Oral thrush would be Oral also, I mean, I, I, it would be in my differential diagnosis. I would definitely scrape that and, and check, but let's say it was negative for, for, for fungi. And you can notice the deep erosion and the star shaped, like, you know, jagged erosion. This is diagnostic of something. And here, the, the, the lace like appearance and the distal tongue. It was a lichen planus. Erosive lichen planus, very good. So oral erosive lichen planus. This is the type that is most at risk of, uh, of getting uh, SCC. And this is the type that is most uh, closely related to hepatitis C. Hutchinson teeth. Hutchinson's teeth, which occurs in what? In what? Syphilis. syphilis, very good. So Hutchinson's teeth and uh, congenital syphilis. Anyone here? Can we get a hint? Uh, the teeth. Look at the teeth. Mishal, what happened with Mishal? Minocycline, very good. So this is drug-induced uh, pigmentation. Tetracycline usually occurs in the upper half or the gingival uh, third of the of the teeth. The distal tooth uh, usually is with minocycline, but don't take that as a law. Uh, it can be either way, but uh, it's important for you to recognize this is a uh, tetracycline family of, uh, of pigmentation of the teeth. What is this? You know, very, I know Halloween was yesterday, but... Um, but uh, myiasis. <laughs> myiasis, very good. Wound myiasis. So, so um, there's two types of myiasis. There's the, the, the foreign myiasis and there's the wound myiasis. 
And uh, yeah, so with these, uh, usually debridement uh, um, uh, is required for, for these patients and uh, you can give an antiparasitic uh, treatment as well. So medical student level of questions now. Cleft palate. Cleft palate? High arched palate. So, so, so this is a high arched palate. Uh, sorry, Amy. Um, so, so um, uh, the high arched palate occurs in what condition? So hyper IgE uh, syndrome is one of them. Yes. And what else? Marfan. Marfan very syndrome. good. So very good. Very good. So for those who don't have kids, you shouldn't have teeth at this age. Maybe you shouldn't have teeth. So this is the natal teeth. So which type of bacteria can it? A type two, the if I'm not mistaken, the Jackson Lawler type. I mean, I forgot the uh, second name. So pecinica can it? A very good natal teeth. And lastly, see, I'm not a dentist again, but yeah, I don't think we should have double rows of teeth unless you're a shark. Mm. So what is this? Is it like hyper IgE or I forgot which genoderm? Um, Another genoderm, not a uh, hyper IgE usually gives you the, the permanent uh, uh, natal teeth, but uh, with Gardner syndrome, very good. Gardner syndrome gives you supernumerary teeth. I mean, I'm sure there's other entities. Uh, uh, you can ask a dentist or a maxillofacial surgeon, they will tell you, but uh, as far as I know, Gardner syndrome is the one that causes uh, supernumerary teeth and uh, double rows of teeth. Um, ectodermal dysplasia, skin cause. Um, usually, they call they have less teeth. Ectodermal dysplasia. They have missing teeth uh, in most uh, scenarios. I've seen a few, and uh, yeah, um, they usually have like you know um, defective or reduced teeth or enamel hypoplasia, for example, uh, rather than inc uh, increased number of teeth. Okay, so I think that was the last slide. Um, I will be happy if, if, you know, if any of you have any questions, I will be uh, happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, I'll thank you for attending and um, any questions? Oh, um, there's one about the rhinosporidiosis. I always mix that yeah. up with the other rhino uh, infectious disease. Like what? Um, uh, was it, there was like rhinosporidiosis and then there's rhinos. Uh, rhinoscleroma? So yeah, rhinoscleroma, that one. yeah. Rhinoscleroma usually would not, because if you can see here, what's, what's being pointed out inside is like a mulberry-like uh, lesion. Rhinosporidiosis would, be, would present with a plaque or an ulcer, and then would quickly lead on to a, 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 a damage, total destruction of the of the nasal and lead to you know, a depressed uh, nasal bridge. Um, but I, I agree that, I mean, uh, on just looking at this, it, it might look like an ulcer. So that's why I, I, it wasn't enough for me to show you a clinical. I thought you deserve to see the histology to come up with diagno your diagnosis. And you know, with the rhinosporidiosis, what are you? What do you expect to see with with the with the, I mean, with rhinoscleroma? What do you expect to see? Uh, Amy. Uh, okay, so um, Salah Nazi answered yes. I Russell, you see, like Salah has said, um, uh, Russell body. That's the Klebsiella one, and, right? Uh, and you would see Macaulay's cell. So yeah, that one's the Klebsiella uh, rhinoscleromatis. Um, uh, um, so uh, yeah, so that's uh, what you would expect to see with rhinoscleroma. And other nasal stuff like, you know, for example, um, uh, prothecosis can also present with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the nasal lesions. But uh, then again, like, you know, when I show you the histology, it was present with uh, something else. Can, uh, can you uh, close your audio, uh, whoever has their audio on? Maybe you have a chance access to the speaker or maybe not, but now you will have sorry. full access to all of us 19 speaker i'd like to add my um does anyone have any uh, uh any follow-up question to that does that is that uh, clear yes thank you okay so any thank other questions 
Anyone that's a uh, don't uh, don't feel uh, shy to ask questions. We're uh, to learn. Going back to that dermatomyositis fa patient with the yeah. the facial edema, like if that walked in, would you you would just make it a clinical diagnosis and not confirm with biopsy? And if you were to biopsy on the face, like what would you what would you like a two millimeter punch or something? And okay, so yeah. looking at this uh, patient, this guy, um, yeah. First of all, history, I mean, with dermatomyositis, even though like, you know, I do see myself as a dermatopathologist and dermatologist, I do think that dermatomyositis is still largely a clinical diagnosis and the histology merely supports your diagnosis. Uh, same thing with blood tests. Um, when you see a patient with, with, with muscle weakness and, uh, and uh, violaceous edema are on the face, you should start thinking of it. But okay, let's see, I, we, the patient just walked into the clinic. The first question is to ask how acute is this? And is this come and go? If, if this is an acute thing and just started in only like a couple of days ago, it, the diagnosis is angedema, angedema, angedema. If, the, if, if it improves and goes back and forth in, 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 a, in a small area of the face, you can think of like, you know, orofacial granulomatosis, for example. Um, if, if there's a history of exposure to something, you can think of contact derm. But if the patient comes to you and tells you like, you know, this has been worsening for like, you know, weeks or months, and uh, they give you a history of, uh, of, uh, of uh, muscle weakness, and then you look at their hands and, and, and knees and elbows, and you do see like violation discoloration, I definitely would biopsy the patient to, to, to confirm that my diagnosis, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, uh, history and, and presentation here is kind of sufficient to make a diagnosis. And as for what kind of biopsy I would do, um, I would do, um, honestly, I would do a punch rather than a shave because uh, uh, I wanna know, because uh, the differential still would be, for example, lupus, and you wanna know if it's like, you know, deep per vascular or per kind of peripheral filter. So, uh, so, a punch, so a shave would not uh, cut it out for me. But I would do a little bit large. I would do a three millimeter punch for 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 this uh, for the face, um, unless I'm going for the eyelid. Uh, with the eyelid, I would do a, a definitely a smaller biopsy. But if if again, if a patient comes in with angioedema like feature, and I can really pick and choose wherever I want in the face, I would go for a three millimeter punch and uh, away from the from the close to the eye. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, any, any more questions? You guys are asking very good follow-up questions, actually. Anyone? Okay. So um, thank you for, for, for attending. And uh, you guys were very good and interactive today. We, we were able to finish a 100-slide presentation, actually, today. It was more cases than, 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 than ever. And uh, yeah, so like I always say, the more, the quicker you answer, the more you um, interact, the, the, the more we get to um, uh, cover uh, ground. So thank you again, and then uh, we'll see you again. And, uh, and uh, our presentations are regularly uh, uploaded in, uh, in our YouTube page, so you can uh, check those out. Um, and if you have any comments, any questions, whether you want to ask them now or you, or you can uh, email me the questions or any comments uh, later on or me or, or Dr. Alba uh, in our emails. Thank you very much.